Pluto Sphere is a cloud-based game streaming service which is specifically designed for virtual reality. It allows you to use a remote PC in a data center many miles from your home and stream PC VR games to your Quest or Quest 2, with other platforms coming soon too. I've been lucky enough to try the beta version of this as yet unpriced service to see how it performs against native PC VR gaming, or using your own local PC for streaming VR games through AirLink or virtual desktop over a home network. So let's take a look. Immersed Robot. Hello everyone, welcome to Immerse Robot. So in this video I'm going to be looking at Pluto Sphere, which is a VR cloud gaming service which is still in beta, it's still early days with it so far and it doesn't have a, a price or anything at the moment but um, hopefully all these details will be coming out at some point. But effectively what they're doing here is you get access to a AWS PC I believe uh, which has been you know sort of specifically configured for virtual reality so it comes with Steam installed, Steam VR is installed and you have to own your these games uh, through your own Steam account. You register your Steam account on this PC and it uses its own streaming software I believe to then stream all of these games over the internet to your Quest or Quest 2. Now the website does say that there will be other supported devices coming soon as well. PC, phones, Microsoft HoloLens and Unreal Glasses as well. So that will be all interesting to see how they uh, perform with this too. But on this remote PC you can install Virtual Desktop as well and stream through Virtual Desktop rather than using their own proprietary uh, streaming software as well so I did do a few of those tests just to see how it compared and so I started out with Winlands I wanted to see how this one performs it's one of my favorite games and basically what I'm doing here is I'm recording all this footage through my Quest 2 directly onto the Quest 2 and I haven't changed any video settings so it's recording in the usual aspect ratio that the Quest likes to record in and only at 30 frames per second as well so this can only give you a very vague idea of what it looks like in the headset of course but I wanted to keep these settings at their base level just so it wasn't changing anything to do with performance in my experience within the game so I wanted to keep everything as everybody else would experience it really that's why the footage isn't you know fantastic but um, yeah so this was performing really well I, you know the latency within this is not really any higher than it is if you're streaming Airlink or virtual desktop over your home network it was almost identical to that now where it sort of falls down a a little bit for me is perhaps in image quality um, it didn't feel like the bit rate or certain other settings were quite as high perhaps but you know it was very good and this first look into it was very impressive everything was pretty responsive and there was you know stutters and things like that but not too many more than you would experience over as I say Airlink or virtual desktop so next I went into 11 table tennis VR and I wanted to test this one because this feels like the kind of game where the latency is very important it needs to be responsive in order for you to perform in this game in the way that it requires you to so first of all if you're used to playing this natively on your quest you will notice latency within this trying it with this method there is noticeable latency as compared to just trying it directly on your quest 2 for example but that's to be expected now is it playable it's certainly playable I just started on the base level of easy uh, just to get an, an idea of it and I did beat the AI on this um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not the best 11 player in the world or anything like that, but it was responsive enough for me to use. Now it's never going to replace playing this game natively on a Quest 2, of course, at, at this point. But I will say that this is performing far better than I ever expected. You know, when you hear cloud streaming services, you think of things like Stadia, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and in the flat gaming world, if you try those, you will notice a little bit of latency. And that kind of latency, you wouldn't think is going to be acceptable in the world of VR but it's possible to do and that's the thing that this uh, this main test has shown me it's absolutely possible now I don't know if it's 100% there yet but it's certainly in the right direction and far ahead of where I expected it to be at this stage so of course I decided to try Half-Life Alex 2 and um, this is one that a lot of people I'm sure would want to see and it was running fine in terms of latency the actual performance of the game was a little bit down compared to what I would expect when playing through Airlink or virtual desktop very slightly um, and the image quality was you know you could see the compression quite regularly on this particular title as well I guess it's a more demanding game and perhaps I should have gone in and lowered settings manually 
manually right the way down perhaps but um, it was running fine it's playable but it, it would never be my preferred way to play this game the visual quality was downgraded quite significantly uh, in places not everywhere but in certain places I wanted to try virtual desktop on using this method as well, so it wasn't using the Pluto Sphere streaming software. Instead, I was going to be using virtual desktop and streaming it over the internet to my Quest 2. And you can see I've, I've managed to get the overlay working here in virtual desktop as well. And you can see the overall latency is sort of stuck. It remains around the mid 50s, 50 milliseconds. And performance was very good, almost identical in terms of latency, perhaps slightly better latency than the uh, the previous way that I tried on the Pluto Sphere machine, but not significantly so. Um, they were performing in terms of latency very similar, it felt like to me. Now, the visual quality, I would say, in Windlands, which I tried first, was slightly higher, um, and that's why I decided to go into settings and just lower things down uh, to get performance up because it was stuttering slightly more. So, I guess virtual desktop using the medium uh, graphical settings, which I had it on when testing this title, was just a little bit too much. So by going into the in-game graphical settings, lowering super sampling down slightly, I did manage to get remove that stutter very slightly and uh, it performed pretty much on par with what the Pluto Sphere streaming software was uh, using too. So very similar experience in both on this particular one. And just incidentally as well, I was running both of these on a Wi-Fi 6 router. They do recommend a Wi-Fi 6 router if possible, but uh, failing that, then an AC router running on the 5 gigahertz network, similar to what we're used to with Airlink or or virtual desktop locally as well so uh, that's what really what they recommend now jumping back into 11 table tennis VR using virtual desktop I did notice it to be very slightly more responsive than using the previous method and you know I guess slightly reduced latency helps that but uh, the game isn't too demanding either and all of these things might have helped virtual desktop on, on this side but yeah it looked great you know the image quality perhaps was very slightly better in virtual desktop too but you know this isn't really a comparison between virtual desktop and their proprietary software or anything like that I just want to see overall how how this uh, cloud VR game streaming can work and it's impressing me far more than I expected. So jumping back into Half-Life Alex again, it was a very similar experience to using the previous method as well, but both were sort of struggling with this game in slightly different ways. I felt like the image quality overall was better in virtual desktop, but it was still, you know, there was stuttering and things like that. It's just a very demanding game, it feels like, but it's certainly playable and it's a, it's a possibility. I think that's the thing to take away from this. Just trying this cloud-based VR gaming service is sort of a revelation in many ways. So just to wrap up a few of my own thoughts after using this service, I would say that Pluto Sphere are doing a fantastic job with getting this on the road. Now, is it completely ready yet? I'm not sure I would say that, but it's very close, far closer than I could have ever expected, actually. You say the words cloud gaming, cloud VR gaming to somebody who is an enthusiast and knows um, what they like. They like lower latency, high image quality and that kind of stuff. And some people might just dismiss that outright, but I would encourage people to try this if they get the opportunity because this could really win you over the advantages of this going forward like you know two years into the future three four five years into the future thinking about this you could have lighter weight vr headsets which uh, don't need so much inbuilt processing power because they can lean on the processing power in a remote pc many miles from their home so it could lead to lighter headsets more comfortable headsets cheaper headsets in the long run as well if this could become close to what we get now natively within the Quest 2 anyway, then why not go down that path if the latency gets good enough, if the, you know, all the network issues behind the scenes get resolved, then this could be definitely be a viable way of playing high quality PC VR games in the future. As I mentioned, I don't think it's all the way there yet, but this is a beta and this, we don't know the pricing for this service, we don't know a lot of the details around this service as well. So these are just things to keep in mind and I just think that Having tried this, it gives you some belief that this is an absolutely viable way to play PC VR games in the future. And, uh, you know, it might not be too far away, certainly not as far away as I would have assumed, in all honesty. 
So that's pretty much it for this video, but I do encourage people to go onto the Pluto Sphere website and just register with them. Try it out yourself if you get the opportunity because um, I think you'll find it works generally better than you might expect. And it just gives you a taste of what might be in the future. I guess that's the, that's the main takeaway from me. But thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Please consider picking up my science fiction virtual reality focused novel, The Memory Engine, a light-hearted tongue-in-cheek adventure through the metaphor available on Amazon Kindle, paperback and as an audible audiobook. Links in the description to this video.